morning everybody welcome back to my channel i'm lisa at vision one love i'm so happy and grateful to be here with you it's my privilege to share my morning routines or one of the most important morning routines that i have so i'm sitting here in my pajama again early morning sun is slowly rising i have my candle and uh, my diary, do some journaling and gratitude work. <clears throat> uh, if you didn't watch the previous videos, the two previous videos with the chapters 4 and 7, I encourage you to do so. I encourage you to buy the book also or to download the digital version of uh, The Science of Getting Rich with Wallace Wattles. It's a really good book. And it was my mentor, Mary Morrissey, who challenged me or encouraged me to read these four chapters every day for 90 days. And her best friend, Bob Proctor, former Bob Proctor, rest in peace, uh, encouraged her to read these four chapters. And if you miss one day, just start all over. So I've been reading these four chapters in four or five periods or maybe more. So now I'm doing it again, and I invite you to be here with me. Every time I read it, I get new ideas, new insights. Maybe not every time, but this is what happens when you study something. You learn by repetition. Everything that we have in our lives already, we have because we have been repeating it. So we repeat. So. I will start with the, the next chapter of these four chapters, and that is chapter 11, Acting in the Certain Way. <clears throat> Thought is the creative power or the impelling force which causes the creative power to act. Thinking in a certain way will bring riches to you, but you must not rely upon thought alone, paying no attention to personal action. That is the rock upon which many otherwise scientific metaphysical thinkers meet shipwreck, the failure to connect thought with personal action. We have not yet reached the stage of development, even supposing such a stage to be possible in which man can create directly from formless substance. But maybe we can. Who says we can't? I mean, there's a lot of people says we can't, but uh, I mean... Whatever picture we put in our mind, we can manifest if we keep it there with the will to the exclusion of all other images. So, if you have an idea that one practice is actually to practice to think about something that you never thought about before. Something completely wild, like riding the bicycle in the speed of, of the planet's speed. It's amazing. How would that feel? Anyhow, uh, we have not yet reached the stage of development, even supposing such a stage to be possible, in which man can create directly from formless substance, without nature's process or the work of human hands. Man must not only think, but his personal action must supplement his thought. By thought, you can cause the gold in the hearts of the mountains to be impelled toward you, but it will not mine itself, refine itself, coin itself into double eagles and come rolling along the roads, seeking its way to your pocket. Under the impelling power of the Supreme Spirit, Emma, vente lite, Emma. My puppy uh, wants to go out. She has to wait a little bit. We were just out. Under the impelling power of the Supreme Spirit, men's affairs will so be ordered that someone will be led to mine the gold for you. Other men's business transactions will be so directed that the gold will be brought toward you, and you must so arrange your own business affairs that you may be able to receive it when it comes to you. Your thought makes all things animate and inanimate work to bring you what you want. But your personal activity must be such that you can rightly receive what you want when it reaches you. You are not to take it as charity, nor steal it, 
you must give every man more in use value than he gives you in cash value. The scientific use cons of thought consists in forming a clear and distinct mental image of what you want, in holding fast to the purpose to get what you want, and in realizing with grateful faith that you do get what you want. Do not try to project or, uh, your thought in any mysterious or occult way with the idea of having it go out and do things for you. That is wasted effort and will weaken your power to think with sanity. The action of thought in getting rich is fully explained in the preceding chapters. Your faith and purpose positively impress your vision upon formless substance which has the same desire for more life that you have. And this vision received from you sets all creative forces at work in and through their regular channels of action but directed toward you. This desire for life, I mean, that's, that's aspiration. The tree that stops growing is dying. We either move forward or backwards. There is no status quo. If we say, oh, this is good, I like to keep it, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with this, we cannot keep it. We think we keep it, but we actually move backwards in that case. And growth is the most natural thing. Everything grows. If we don't grow, we're dying within. Maybe we're walking around here in our bodies, but in reality, inside, Bob Proctor, he says that the funeral, when a person dies, is just a formality because the person never lived anyway. He's been dead because we don't go for our dreams. We just follow this. So what would you love? Think about it and put it in your mind. Keep it there. Trust that it will be yours because that's the laws. Everything is created twice. First in the mind and then in reality, in physical expression. <clears throat> It is not your part to guide or supervise the creative process. All you have to do with that is to retain your vision, stick to your purpose and maintain your faith and gratitude. But you must act in a certain way so that you can appropriate what is yours when it comes to you, so that you can meet the things you have in your picture and put them in the proper place as they arrive. So you just allow it to come to you. You can really see the truth of this. When things reach you, they will be in the hands of other men who will seek an equivalent for them. And you can only get what's yours by giving the other man what is his. Your pocketbook is not going to be transformed into a pranata's purse, which shall always be full of money without effort on your part. This is the crucial point in the science of getting rich, right here where thought and personal action must be combined. There are very many people who consciously or unconsciously set the creative forces in action by the strength and persistence of their desires, but who remain poor because they do not provide for the reception of the thing when it comes. By thought, the thing you want is brought to you, and by action, you receive it. Whatever your action is to be, it is evident that you must act now. You cannot act in the past, and it's essential to the clearness of your mental vision that you dismiss the past from your mind. You cannot act in the future, because the future is not yet here. And you cannot tell how you will want to act in any future contingency until that contingency has arrived. Because you're not in the right business or the right environment now, do not think that you must postpone action until you get into the right business or environment and do not spend time in, in the present taking thought as to the best course in possible future emergency. Have faith in your ability to meet any emergency when it arrives. We have to be bold. When we have this inspired idea that gives us life and all the paradigms are telling us, well, you cannot do this because, well, you don't have the money, you don't know. Uh, we start, because when we start, doors will open, and answers that we had no idea about will come. 
from that frequency because we are aligned with it. We are harmonious with that. If you act in the present, when your mind, with your mind on the future, your present action will be with a divided mind and will not be effective. Put your whole mind into present action. We do what we have from from where we are. No, wait a minute. We do what we can with what we've got from where we are. What can you do right now? Maybe it's a tiny step, but one step in the right direction will lead you to Mount Everest one day. And ask yourself, is this that I'm doing now supportive of the reality or the life that I want to create? If it's not, stop it. Stop it. And you're thinking. Put your whole mind into present action. Do not give your creative impulse to original substance and then sit down and wait for results. If you do, you will never get them. Act now. There is never any time but now, and there will never be any time but now. If you're ever to begin to make ready for the reception of what you want, you must begin now. And if you can't do it now, or maybe you think, uh, then put it in your calendar, because then that becomes reality. If you calendarize your ideas, it's there. So if you can't do it today, say, okay, I'll do it Monday. When? If not now, then when? Put it down there. Don't postpone it. Just do it. Jump. And your action, whatever it is, must most likely be in your present business or employment and must be upon the persons and things in your present environment. You cannot act where you are not, you cannot act where you have been, and you cannot act where you are going to be. You can only act where you are. Do not bother as to whether yesterday's work was well done or ill done. Do today's work well. Do not try to do tomorrow's work now. There will be plenty of time to do that when you get to it. Do not try by occult or mystical means to act on people or things that are out of your reach. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do not wait for a change of environment before you act. Get a change of environment by action. Bru uh, Wayne Dyer, also, is not here in physical with us anymore. He says, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So try to change your perceptive perception and open your mind be bold in your thinking and do it act upon it because without action nothing will change so you can act upon the environment in which you are now as to cause yourself to be transferred to a better environment hold with faith and purpose the vision of yourself in the better environment but act upon your present environment with all your heart and with all your strength and with all your mind. Do not spend any time in daydreaming or castle building. Hold to the one vision of what you want and act now. Do not cast about seeking some new thing to do or some strange, unusual or remarkable action to perform as the first step toward getting rich. It is probable that your actions, at least for some time to come, will be those you have been performing for some time past. But you are to begin now to perform these actions in the certain way, and which will surely make you rich. If you are engaged in some business and feel that it's not the right one for you, do not wait until you get into the right business before you begin to act. Do not feel discouraged or sit down and lament because you are misplaced. No man was ever so misplaced that he could not find the right place and no man ever became so involved in the wrong business that he could not get into the right business. Hold the vision of yourself in the right business with the purpose to get into it, with the faith that you will get into it, and you are getting into it, but act in your present business. Use your present business as the means of getting a better one, and use your present environment as the means of getting into a better one. Your vision of the right business, if held with faith and purpose, will cause the Supreme to move the right business toward you. 
and your action, if performed in a certain way, will cause you to move your work toward your business. If you're an employee or a wage earner and feel that you must change places in order to get what you want, do not project your thought into space and rely upon it getting you another job. It will probably fail to do so. Hold the vision of yourself in the job that you want, while you act with faith and purpose on the job you have, and you will certainly get the job you want. Your vision and faith will set the creative forces in motion to bring it toward you, and your action will cause the forces in your own environment to move you towards a better place, to the place that you want. And in closing this chapter, we will add another statement to our syllabus. There is a thinking stuff from which all things are made, and which, in its original state, permeates, penetrates, and fills the interspaces of the universe. A thought in this substance produces the thing that's imagined by the thought. Man can form things in his thought, and by impressing his thought upon formless substance, can cause the thing he thinks about to be created. In order to do this, man must pass from competitive to the creative mind. He must form a clear mental picture of the things that he wants and hold this picture in his thought with a fixed purpose to get what he wants and the unwavering faith that he does get what he wants, closing his mind to all that tends to shake his purpose, dim his vision or quench his faith, that he may receive what he wants when it comes. Man must act now upon the people and things in his present environment. I have one statement that I have on, uh, on the wall over there. It says, I love what I do, and I do what I love. So when I do things that I maybe don't like so much, first I remind myself of why I do it. And I try to put love into it, no matter what it is. So we can change our perspective to be more loving, to be more grateful, to be, what can we do? Focus on that. Ask good questions to make your brain think better things that feels better. Every time we feel bad or shit, <laughs> we are self-destructive. If we knew the power, we, when we really know the power of our brains and our thoughts and our minds, we will never ever think a negative thought again. My mentor, she says, no one can make you feel anything because your thinking makes you feel things. So change the way you think about things and the things you look at will change. I encourage you to do this work. Read these four chapters. I will pick the last chapter tomorrow. Read these four chapters for 90 days, look into them, write down all the new ideas that come to you, all the new understandings, and put it into action. What can you do today? Go to your vision first, and then ask yourself, what can I do today to move closer to that? Because you can never go to your dream, you have to come from it, you have to be there, you have to be this person in your vision or become this person in your vision. And if you just get 1% better every day, six months down the line, you will not even recognize your life. So I wish you a great day. It's your life. Make it a great one. And all my love to you. Bye.